how are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry if you can hear Sienna panting in the background. We were just playing outside to tire her out a little bit, but it might be a little bit annoying. It is Friday, I think the 20th, and I've decided to start a vlog today because I have a very, very special book delivery coming today. I am getting my signed Waterstone Special Edition copy of Rewitched by Lucy Wood in the post later today. I don't know when it's arriving, hopefully soon, although it doesn't really matter because I probably can't stop start reading it until later anyway, but I'm a big big fan of Lucy Wood's YouTube channel and have been keeping up to date on all her book updates and watching all her latest videos about the process and I don't think I have a a completely parasocial relationship with her <laughs> because that's unhealthy but she is one of the only youtubers that I like feel like I would generally want to be friends with she's just super nice and she's worked really hard for this and I don't know where so it's weird but I just feel so proud of her because you can see when you watch her videos how much this means to her and how much work she's put in and how long she's wanted this for and it honestly is like watching someone's dream come true live before your eyes. It's quite emotional and I am really excited to finally read it. The other exciting thing that's happening, I think it'll probably be the last bit in this vlog, is Lucy Wood is coming to Bath to do a book event at Toppings with two other authors. Sangu Mandana is one of the other ones. I can't remember who the other author is. I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. So I got tickets to go see Lucy Wood and Sangu Mandana and this other their author talk about their new releases. I'm really excited. I don't know if I will get to talk to her or meet her but I'm just really excited to see her talk and hear, hear about the book more and I'll have read it by then and it'll be really exciting. I am going on my own but I think this is the kind of thing where lots of people are gonna be going on their own so I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't really mind going places like this on my own either. I think this is happening a couple of weeks from now actually. So my plan is I'm going to read Rewitched in this vlog and I may read another cosy witchy book as well in between that and meeting Lucy Wood. So this video will kind of just be really cosy reading vlog, reading books about witches and autumn. It's already starting to feel really autumny here I think. We had a cold spell so we mistakenly thought it was time to put the heating on in the morning so when we woke up we weren't freezing in the house. Did that, it was great for a couple of days and then the heat came back so we had to put it off. We completely jumped the gun there. But then this morning on me and Sienna's walk, it was the first time I noticed that the leaves were starting to fall on the ground and they were really crunchy. It was very satisfying. My plan for the rest of the morning is to get some writing done. I am currently writing a chapter that I knew what I wanted to happen in this chapter but I didn't know how it was gonna happen. But yesterday I kind of had a bit of a breakthrough with it and realised that actually I was overcomplicating it in my head, which is often the case when you're stumped on something, isn't it? So I wrote a bit of that chapter last night and I'm gonna continue on with that just now. I've got a cup of tea and a cupcake. Alex has made brownies, but they're not ready to eat yet. They are out of the oven, but apparently they're too hot. So I'll be gorging on that later. I'm excited to take you along with me in this here vlog. <coughs> Esty had wanted to become a paleontologist for as long as she could remember, but in recent years, namely since she moved to Edinburgh and discovered she was not wholly welcome in the field, she often found herself forgetting the reasons why she was pursuing it. She lost herself in the stress of workloads and proving herself and always exceeding expectations but never reaping the rewards. Since working with Theodore, however, she felt as though the weight on her shoulders had lessened despite having added overthrowing the patriarchy to her load. That inkling of why began to creep its way back into her soul the more she got to know him. She supposed this was how a true partnership should feel. She wouldn't know. It's here! <laughs> Let's open it. I was getting worried actually that it wasn't going to come today because I wasn't having any updates about the delivery or anything. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited! 
I'm so excited. Look at the sprayed edges. It's so sweet. Look at the little cat. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <gasps> I was like, oh no, it's not signed because I couldn't see a signature. But it's in silver pen here. Oh, it's gorge. Jumping to the acknowledgements. <laughs> Let me read you the blur. Belle's powers weren't completely dormant. They were just a little sleepy. Belladonna Blackthorn hasn't lost her magical spark, but she hasn't seen it in a while either. Balancing work at her beloved London bookshop, Lunar Books, with handling her toxic boss and concealing her witchcraft from those around her, Belle is burnt out. Perfecting the potential of her magic is the last thing on her mind. But when her 30th birthday brings a summons from her coven and a trial that tests her worthiness as a witch, Belle risks losing her magic forever. With only a month to fix things and a suspicion that dark forces may be working against her, Belle will need all the help she can get from the woman in her life, from an unlikely mentor figure, and even from an infuriating coven watchman who's sworn to protect her. With found family, a dash of romance, and an uplifting message about self-love, Rewitched is a cosy autumnal fantasy that will leave readers spellbound. Well, it's gonna be hard not to start reading this straight away. But I'm so excited. How many pages is it? Just over 400. I need to get the sticker off. <laughs> Honestly, reading the acknowledgements there was quite emotional. I love reading acknowledgements in books, even like authors that I've never read before. I just find acknowledgements, especially if you've enjoyed the book, such a lovely insight into the author at the end and what motivated them and everything. And it's just, I think it's always really heartwarming to read. And that one was especially special because I know who she is. Uh, this is just going to be so cozy. I've just had my lunch and I'm gonna do some more writing but I will get into this later and I will be sure to keep you updated. I don't know if I have any books with sprayed edges. I think this might be my only sprayed edge book but it is stunning. <laughs> Today's actually Sunday 
I didn't I didn't vlog anything on Saturday because I didn't sleep very well Friday night and I woke up not feeling great so I had a nap for most of the nap afternoon. Didn't get that much reading done so there was no point updating you and we didn't really do anything either. We watched Strictly on Saturday night but that was all that really happened yesterday. Friday we ended up going climbing which is something me and Alex have started doing recently. Alex used to climb all the time in uni. He was part of our university's climbing society. I am a beginner but I've got all the kit now and I'm having a good time and I can feel myself getting better which is good. So yeah we went climbing Friday and then we got a takeaway which I think you saw a clip of. I ordered butter chicken and they gave me a korma instead, which was disappointed. I do like kormas, but I find that after the first few bites, the it gets too sweet. And then Alex didn't really enjoy his, so I don't think we'll be getting a curry from where we got it from again. We didn't get it from our usual place. I say usual. I think we've had a, cu a curry from one other place. <laughs> since we moved here, but we really like the other curry we got. It's a really rainy day outside. Sienna hates the rain, so she refused to go on her walk this morning. She refused to go toilet. We eventually managed to get her to, but I think she might be a bit difficult today to keep entertained. But it was cute because we had to force her out into the rain to do her toilet. When she came back in, I was she was so miserable. So I put her jumper on for the first time this season. One of her jumpers, but it's so cute because it has like little foxes on it. And she looks adorable. So the plan today is to keep Sienna entertained, get cosy in the living room. I don't know if I'm going to do any chores. There are things I need to do, like the washing there I need to put away. I should probably hoover, but I also don't know if I can be bothered. So I want to make a dent in reading. I also have a really big urge to watch Emily, which is a film about Emily Bronte. I watched it last year and I loved it. It's really like autumn-y and I've just been craving watching it. And with the weather today, I think it's going to be very atmospheric. But I also want to watch Practical Magic because I've never watched that film before and I have a feeling that I'm going to love that film. I probably love the book as well. I think I want to watch the film before I read the book though. But I don't think it's on anything, so that might be something we look, look into later on in the week. Alex is away now on a trip, a work trip. He's going to America for the week, so it's just me and Sienna in the house. He just left there and we're sad that he's gone. But it means that we can do whatever we want. I am also in the middle of a game called The Quarry, which is a kind of, what would you, it's a horror game, but it's kind of a like, like choose your own path, choose your own adventure. Oh, it's a decision-based game. I think that's what they call it, where like the game changes based on what decisions you make within the game. And I am enjoying it. I, I, I'm not too scared by it. In the prologue bit of the game, it did make me jump. But I'm also, I don't know if it's worth risking playing that game when Alex isn't here and getting scared, but we'll see. Let me give you a reading update. So I have started Rewitch, but because I wasn't feeling too well yesterday, I haven't made that big a dent. I'm just under 100 pages through. So we are into the story now and I am really enjoying it. It's so nice actually, because it's rare that you read a book where you're familiar with the author before. It's quite fun because I watch Lucy Wood's vlogs and very familiar with her tone, her sense of humour, how she speaks, and I can really feel her presence in her writing. There's certain jokes that appear in the book where I'm just like, I can hear that in Lucy Wood's voice saying it. It's just very, very cosy so far and warm. I think that's the, the best way I can describe it. It's just like a really warm, comforting read. I honestly, I'm not like too far into the plot, but I like it so far. I think it's it's a fun concept. I can already see the journey that our, our main character is going to go on. And I think this is going to be a really, really strong debut, which thank God, thank God I'm enjoying it. Because it, be it would be awkward if I wasn't enjoying it. <laughs> Since I'm going to go see her speak about it, I'll have to read more before I can fully give you my thoughts on it. But what shall we do, Sienna? It's, it's lunchtime now, I think. I think I might get some lunch, make Sienna a treat towel to give her some entertainment. And then we can cuddle up on the couch and read for a couple hours. And then we will... Oh, Alex has just sent me a message saying he misses me already. <laughs> I actually, I hate it when he goes away. It feels worse this time as well because he usually just goes on work trips within the country but this time he's going to america and america as a place terrifies me but anyway that's the plan just now we'll see where the rest of the day takes us won't we sienna hey i'm balancing you on my coffee 
thing just now so hopefully you don't topple over. I'm not gonna have a very nutritious lunch today because I can't be bothered <coughs> making anything. I'm just gonna have a peanut butter sandwich and some crisps I think. I don't even know if I can be bothered having fruit. I've lit this candle, it's gingered pear cider flavour candle from WH Smith, eh, not WH Smith, TK Maxx. I just wanted to show you this because I really like the container. I think it's the DW, DW candles. They've got like a soda pop range and me and Alex have started collecting these because this one's lit, obviously it's still candle. Because look, they make the perfect cute wee glasses after you've used the candle up so we've got the watermelon one and a pumpkin one and then obviously when this one's used up we'll have a gingerbread pear one and i've been trying to buy them in different colors but i went into tk maxx two times consecutively and they didn't have any of this range of candles they actually had a poor showing of candles especially for this time of year but then the last time i went in they had one this one and it was in a different color from what we had so I immediately had to buy that but my goal is to have four of these glasses so I need to keep my eyes peeled for like I don't know maybe they'll have like a yellow lemon flavored one or something I love them I think they're they're really cute glasses and the candles smell really good as well So I've just been reading Wee Witch for the past couple hours. I'm about 30% through now. I'm starting to really get into it. I don't think I'm going to spoil it too much, but I'm not going to not talk about what's happening either. I've gotten to the bit where Belle has just gone through her trial and it was really quite emotional to read it because the trial is basically for her to prove that like she is worthy of her magic and that she should be allowed to keep it forever. Part of the trial is that the jury looks back on her life and nine manifests are picked out from her life of like examples of her utilizing her magic for a specific reason and like the first few manifests start out really well but the older she gets the less she's using the magic for good and she's using it for more selfish reasons it gets so heartbreaking because one of the one of the manifests is like her using the magic to try and change her body and the way she looks and then another one is her trying to change her person, who she is fundamentally. The way it was written and the way the jury reacts to it, they're not very, very understanding about it, is very, it was really emotional. And I'm really feeling like this is a book that's going to be very hard hitting to people in their 20s and early 30s because it I, it's feeling to me like it's definitely going to be a book that's about like understanding that your 20s are so difficult because you go into your 20s thinking that you have to achieve so much do it all quickly and you go in with these goals and mindsets of these milestones that you have to hit and most people don't thrive in their 20s because 
most people are still developing into an adult. Most people are still figuring themselves out. Most people don't know who they are or what they want to do yet. Unlike when you're a teenager who you're given grace and time and you don't have the pressures of being an adult, you're more free to figure that stuff out. In your 20s, you still have all of these conflicting thoughts and feelings and confusion but with the added pressure of being an adult and having bills to pay and new relationships to navigate and learning how to live life. I've still got a few years till I'm 30, so I don't have that kind of impending sense of doom yet that I know people turning 30 tend to struggle with. I don't know if I'll struggle with it or not. That it is like a milestone age where people kind of put expectations on themselves to have achieved certain things when really what I tend to hear is that it isn't until your 30s when you can truly start like properly enjoying life because you've kind of gotten to a point where you've made all the mistakes in your 20s and you're you're kind of past the difficult stage of figuring things out and you've, you've got more clear goals in your 30s and so yeah reading that section of like Belle being judged and condemned on how she lived her 20s was really difficult. I'd be mortified if I had to relive moments from my 20s in front of a bunch of strangers. <laughs> All that being said, to sum up, I think this is going to be very relatable, <laughs> despite the fact that Belle's a witch and I'm not. There's no romance yet, but like we've been introduced to a potential love interest, very handsome man, kind of dressed 70s vibes. He's kind of like, the way he's described as being dressed is giving me Doctor Who. Kind of Christopher Eccleston Doctor Who because he's wearing this like long leather jacket. I mean that only in like dress sense wise he's not described as looking like Christopher Eccleston. Not that there's anything wrong with Christopher Eccleston but more that's not the fight. <laughs> I was watching Lucy Wood's new vlog as well. This is her publication week one. So it's all very fitting. This is a very Lucy Wood themed reading vlog and um, but she was saying that she imagines Belle if it was ever adapted to film being played by Olivia Cook and I can very much see that so now I'm, now I'm imagining Olivia Cook in my head. It is still pouring rain outside. I don't know if Sienna's gonna get a walk today because I again tried to pee her earlier and she looked like I was putting her through the worst kind of torture known to man so I had to have a play with her ball indoors to just give her a bit of exercise and entertainment because she was getting bored I could tell but thank goodness it's her dinner time now and we have this kind of ball treat dis dispenser that we put her dinner in so it takes her a bit longer to eat and it like gives her a bit of enrichment at the same time so I'm gonna let her do that for a bit. I've got a call with um, my friends later as well, which will be really nice. I can't decide if I'm gonna read a bit more or if I'm gonna watch Emily just now or later. We'll see. I'm gonna go feed Sienna now, but making good progress with Rewitched and I'm really enjoying it. It's very cozy, especially with this like gloomy Sunday weather. Um, Sienna's thing is grey, but it does make this really annoying sound. Hang on. Whenever she rolls it, it makes like a quack. But it's good. It keeps her entertained. Well, it's been a few days since I've given a reading update. I've just been so, so tired that I've not been reading as much as I usually would. At night time, I think it's a combination of Alex being away in America, so I'm like sole dog parent, which means I'm in charge of all of Sienna's walks and making sure she's entertained during the day. And she's not a human child, <laughs> but she does require a lot of entertainment and I like her to have a happy life so I try and play with her lots throughout the day and everything but honestly like how tiring I find keeping Sienna entertained and happy proves to me that I would not enjoy being a parent of an actual child because that would be 10 times more tiring couldn't do it between that and having started my new job this is my third week and this is the first week where I felt quite overwhelmed the first two weeks I felt really confident I was getting lots right and I was getting to do lots of like the training courses and everything so I didn't feel too much pressure but this is the first week where I've been kind of like juggling tasks and trying to keep on top of things while still feeling unsure about how to answer emails and not understanding fully the language used at my work and learning a new job 
can be so tiring. I just feel like I've spent every second of working this week trying to figure something out and trying to solve a problem and taking too long to do things that I know wouldn't take as long if I was more knowledgeable and obviously I know that it's okay that I'm not because I'm new but I'm very much a perfectionist I think and it just frustrates me when I can't do something easily straight away. Most of it's been fine though and my boss is really really nice. There's one thing in particular that I'm really struggling with that um, she's already walked me through and I just can't seem to grasp it by myself and I was very brave and at the end of today after trying it again by myself I messaged her and I was like I, I, I'm not confident in this at all can you please walk me through it again at some point and that's real growth because past me would have probably just tried to stick doing it over and over again myself until I reached breaking point and had a mental breakdown so I'm proud of myself for actually asking for help <laughs> I felt kind of like crying after work today. Literally nothing bad happened. I was just tired. Um, but I didn't. I actually managed to pull myself out of it. I took Sienna on a walk straight away. The heavens opened up on us, so it was a short walk. Got home, we played together. I got in the shower, got in fresh PJs, washed my hair. And also Alex bought me loads of toxic waste sweets, which I hadn't had since like primary school, but he bought me it specifically because I was starting a new job and because I have anxiety and I struggle with change, especially he bought toxic waste because apparently if you start to like panic or if you start to have a panic attack or anxiety or whatever that's one of the ways you can snap yourself out of it is by putting something really sour in your mouth because something about like your senses just get a shock to the system and it kind of snaps you out of it it's the same as like splashing your face with cold water and everything and i've not really had to use them yet for the job and it wasn't like i finished work today and was like having a panic attack <laughs> but i just felt a bit like overwhelmed so I popped a toxic waste and the first one was literally not sour at all so I had to pop another one. The one time I actually need a sour horrible toxic waste didn't even work. Anyway let's stop babbling on about my boring day and talk about the book instead. I am really nearly finished. I've got like less than 100 pages to go and I have a theory brewing about what's going on. I don't think I want to say in the video what my theory is. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's not read it. Maybe I'll speak in code. I have a theory that someone who we're supposed to trust or was set up to be a trustworthy figure is actually the baddie. And someone who we were set up not to trust is actually the goodie. I have deeper thoughts on why, but I'm not going to spoil it for you if you've not read it and you want to. That is basically what I think is going on though. I've been really, really enjoying it. The only thing I would say is that I think the pacing in the book was maybe a little bit off at the start because there's a really prominent character who comes into the book like halfway through, which I would have thought this person should have come into the book like the start of the second act rather than midway through the book. And I think if that had happened, this a sequence of events would have started sooner. And in my head, that would just make sense more in terms of pacing. But that's the only thing that I've really taken any issue with. And when I say issue, like it's personal preference, isn't it? It's probably just because I love this character. I think the character who comes in midway through is my favourite. I love them so much. So I wish that we'd had more time with them. I think generally the characters along with like the overall vibe, cozy vibe of the book is really what's standing out about it for me. The romance, to be honest, when the romance started happening I was like, I don't know if I'm feeling this. And then all of a sudden Lucy Wood came out with like quite a, quite a spicy little moment between the two of them. I loved it. I was in. Belle is being a bit infuriating because I feel like she is miscommunicating and misunderstanding situations so much and I just kind of want to grab her and shake her a bit. But yeah, my plan now is to try and relax and finish this book. I've set up the room, the bedroom, to be really cozy. Sienna's gone to her own bed, but I'm gonna try and coax her up to cuddle me. I think I'm gonna finish this book quite early tonight, actually, so I might start a new one. But I think I've made the executive decision not to vlog it because I've already edited parts of this vlog and it's already quite long. Um, I don't think we need to read another book together, especially because 
I'm gonna include the bookshop event at the end of this vlog. So I think it's gonna be fine without me messing it up. And also it's kind of nice that this is actually just a, a vlog centered around Lucy Wood. I've read her book, I've watched her vlogs, and then I'm gonna go see her in the flesh. Okay, I'm gonna go read now. Oh hi! A lot has changed in the past 24 hours since I last spoke to you. I cut myself a fringe and I finished Rewitched. <laughs> I basically, when I cut my hair, I attempt usually to do like curtain bangsy, but I saw a TikTok of someone cutting like a shorter, more choppy fringe style and five minutes later scissors were in my hand and I was doing it. <laughs> It was very impulsive. I quite like it actually. It's a bit of a change and it looks better with makeup on. Last night when I did it, I looked at myself and I was like, I could be the fifth member of the Beatles. But I don't know, it's fun. And if I get bored of it, it won't take long for it to grow out anyway. And I finished Rewitched last night and it was so lovely. So, so lovely. The ending, specifically the very last chapter, was one of the most heartwarming endings to a book I think I've ever read. It wrapped up everything very nicely in a very neat, pretty little bow. It was kind of movie-esque the way the last chapter was written, I thought. Like, I could really visualise it in a movie. I really loved it. I think this is such a strong debut. I felt the first act was a bit too long and ate into the middle part of the book, which I think was the strongest part. So I wish that had been a bit longer, but for a debut, I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I think it did everything that she wanted it to do. I could really feel how personal a story it was. I loved the characters, especially Belle's mentor. He was my favorite. I loved Belle's relationship with Ariadne and how that played a big part in the last section of the book. It was kind of giving Frozen vibes, how everything wrapped up. And if you've read the book and seen Frozen, I feel like maybe you know what I'm referring to. But yeah, it was so wonderful and I can't wait to go meet Lucy Wood and tell her how much I love her videos and how much I loved her book and how I will read anything that she puts out. I think she's only gonna get better. I'm excited that I can be here from the very beginning of her writing career. It's very exciting. So the next time you see me, it's going to be probably me heading into Bath to the event. I'll take you along with me. I don't know if I'll get to speak to her, if I'll pluck up the courage to speak to her. <laughs> and I'm also going on my own, so I don't think I'll be able to film it or anything. But I will take you to the event and I'll film clips of the event and everything and I'll gush about it afterwards to you. I think me and Sienna are gonna go have some dinner. I'm gonna have some dinner, she's had hers. And I see everyone talking about this new show about Mormon wives, the secret lives of Mormon wives or something. And I think it might be on Disney Plus. And I think we might watch that together. Alex is home tomorrow, so. And I had a better day at work. <laughs> it's all coming up Millhouse. a distraction to the thing that you want to yeah. channel your joy and your focus and your time into. I have you very precariously toppled on top of a book and leaning against flowers right now so you might fall but it is the day after the <clears throat> witching hour event that I went to so it was Sangu Mandana leading the conversation with Lucy Wood, obviously. And the other author who I couldn't remember the name of is Nadia Elfassi, and she's written Best Hex Ever, and it's her debut novel. And oh my goodness, I had such a lovely, lovely time last night. It was quite nice, actually, from the beginning. I got ready and put my makeup on and got dressed and 
went into Bath by myself because Alex didn't come with me and it was actually quite nice going into the city on my own. It felt a little bit weird because I usually, whenever I go out to do something like that, it's usually me and Alex going on a date or whatever. But I felt kind of like I was taking myself on a date and it was really, really nice. And then um, when I got there, there was like an option of wine or cordial. I had a glass of wine. It was like a £10 ticket for the event, but you could get that £10 back off a book you purchased there. So I bought the Best Hex Ever book because I already had Sangu Mandana's book, just not signed. <clears throat> I'll show you the signed copy, it's so cute. She has a little stamp in it as well. And yeah, I sat down with my wine and I felt a little bit awkward because obviously I had no friends there, but there was quite a few people there on their own. And I kind of started talking to a couple of women sitting beside me and they were really, really nice. And then the event happened and it was so, so lovely just listening to these three women talk about writing and specifically like cozy fantasy romantic writing as well. There was a feminine energy in the bookshop that kind of made me feel a bit emotional. Just the way they were talking and the way the audience was responding. It just all felt very safe and comforting to be a part of that group. And they were talking, they just talk, talking about like domestic magic and how like a cosy magic system is just as valid and as important as these like more sprawling in-depth magic systems. And Lucy Wood was of course really funny, just like she is in her YouTube videos. But honestly, because it's probably because I didn't know who she was, but Nadia Elfassi, she just seemed incredible to me. This book isn't cozy fantasy, obviously. Let's read the blurb to you. When it comes to love, sometimes the recipe needs a little magic. Dina is a skilled kitchen witch and cafe owner serving magic-infused pastries to her loyal customers, but it's hard not to feel something is missing when you're cursed to hurt anyone who falls for you. Scott is a museum curator recently back in London after a brutal breakup two years ago and is looking to make up for all the time he missed. He's determined to be the perfect best man at his best friend's upcoming wedding, but his plans take an unexpected turn when he meets the bewitching maid of honour. After a weekend in the countryside full of peculiar hedge mazes, palm readings by candlelight and a midnight Halloween ritual, there's no denying the chemistry between them. But there's just one problem. The hex still holds and Dina knows that Scott is in danger. Can Dina break the spell before it breaks both their hearts? This is also a spicy romance, which I'm very excited for. I think it's just going to be so, so cute. And I did start a book like the night before the event but then obviously I bought this last night. I didn't read when I got back home, but I kind of just want to start reading this. So I might, I might put the other book that I started reading to the side and just go into this. I didn't end up staying behind to meet them. One, because it was quite busy. The books were already signed at the front when you bought them and you could stay behind after the talk if you wanted to like meet them and have a chat and get you, the books dedicated to you. But after the talk was finished, one of the booksellers, the bookseller who organised it got up and was like, okay, so if you want to leave now, now's your chance to leave. Otherwise, if you want to like stay behind and meet, I'm gonna try and get the authors out of here by half nine. It was eight at the time, yada, yada, yada. And I was sitting there like, it's like eight, it's eight now. It's quite busy in here and I don't know if I can be bothered waiting an hour and a half when I don't really have anyone to talk to. Like I did have those nice women beside me, but I'm also kind of an awkward person. And I was like, can I handle up to an hour and a half of like trying to make chit chat with people that I don't know? The concept of that felt quite stressful to me in that moment. And I was like, you know, I came here for the talk and I had a really nice time and I'm okay going home now. I also really liked the idea of getting home by nine o'clock and I did. I had a cup of tea and I did my nails. The other reason that I didn't stay was because it was so hot in there and oh my god this might be TMI and it might be a bit mortifying but I'm gonna be honest with you I stood up from my seat and I had sweated onto the seat of the chair and onto the back of the chair. I was wearing like I was wearing a vest with like a thin jumper and some corduroy trousers. <sighs> I don't think I'm that sweaty a person. I definitely sweat but like god I was embarrassed and obviously like I was sitting next to these women that I didn't know but I was chatting to and who were really nice and I stood up and I was like fuck please please don't see that <laughs> I've sweated on this folding chair I was pretty embarrassing <laughs> yeah it was really really nice to take myself out like that and see these really accomplished women doing the thing that I really want to do 
it's very inspiring and it was really a nice way to push myself out of my comfort zone because I don't leave the house that much anymore. It becomes so much of a homebody, I just love being at home but that means that I don't like push myself to do new things very much and I know that it's something that I should probably do more of. But I just had a lovely, lovely time. I can't wait to read this book and I will be sure to tell you all about it once I do. Thank you so much if you've watched the whole video for coming along with me on this kind of witchy reading vlog. Oh! You've been falling slowly. <laughs> oh my god, stop! I had a really nice time filming this. I might start doing more reading vloggy videos, we'll see. But I hope that you have enjoyed it and I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.